There's a new incubator for technology startups in India, Kosla Labs, backed by venture capitalist Vinod Kosla. Shrikant Nadamuni has taken over as CEO of Kosla Labs. We all know his uh, previous assignment, which was chief uh, head of technology. I was just going to say CTO. Head of technology <laughs> at the uh, UID, which is the Unique Identification Authority of India. Shrikant, always great to talk to you. And today's conversation is going to focus on Kosla Labs. Uh, it's relatively new, mm -hmm. and I know you said that you're putting a game plan into place, but now that it's been a couple of months, can you give us a sense of what the mandate is and, and how that mandate is evolving? Well, um, we are an incubator. I guess the word is sort of loosely defined. Um, well, it was basically, uh, Vinod and I kept meeting each other at different conferences, and uh, you know we had this idea of creating this... Um, lab, if you will, where we could experiment with ideas. We could try out things. Uh, we were focused in the uh, India market to figure out what we could do to you know, take up large problems and see if we can do something about it. So that was the idea. Um, so the labs is more about experimentation than anything else. right? It's about putting bright people together uh, Many of us who have been working on governance and working on many of the issues here in India have some sense of what are the kinds of problems that we could look at. So the idea is to see if we can come up with something that can you know, uh, solve some of these issues. You know, uh, two things uh, from there from your answer. One is, how do you define incubation? Because as you mm. said yourself, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, loosely uh, defined, the term incubator. The other is, uh, I understand the philosophy behind Kosla Labs, but really it opens up everything out there then. <laughs> so, um, how, you know, how are you starting out? I mean, yeah. what are the key focus areas? Okay, let's, I mean, uh, talking about incubation, um, I don't have a set notion of how we're going to go about it. Uh, we, we, it's going to roll and we're going to figure out uh, how to do this right. Uh, largely, if you see incubators uh, in the Bay Area, I guess many in India as well, uh, they take, uh, I guess, a group of companies uh, you know, with a good ideas and maybe a good team and so on, and then they help them out, maybe with space, maybe with some ideas, uh, validating their <coughs> uh, business model perhaps, helping them with maybe technology, uh, and maybe putting them in front of uh, VCs and so on, demo day and so on and so forth. Um, right now, we aren't thinking that. Um, we're basically trying to see if uh, we can actually play with some ideas, mm -hmm. actually build a few things, fit them together, and actually market test it, take it to the ground, and when hopefully some of them get traction, we go fund those companies and launch them off. So at least the thinking right now, uh, in my mind, is um, sort of a very involved working with entrepreneurs and actually getting your hands dirty and building things. Frankly, sounds that's exciting. what I enjoy. That's that, what I enjoy. It sounds doing. exciting and that's what you've done. Exactly. Uh, but, you know, which entrepreneurs from which areas, give me, like, at least a sense. Yeah. You know, what are you looking at? See, there's several, you know, sort of fundamental problems that, you know, we'd like to take a crack at. I but mean, you're looking at everything from the technology lens. Uh, technology is our strength. Yes. So trying to see if technology can improve some of these sectors is certainly going to be uh, the perspective that we will come at it. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, you have got to get, understand the domain well enough. Uh, an example, uh, healthcare. Uh, more than 40% of women uh, who have delivered a baby fall sick within six weeks in the country. Right? Uh, about 43% of kids uh, under the age of three are malnourished in the country. Uh, so there's a huge gap in healthcare. Right? And the misconception is everybody thinks that people are all spending money or they're going to the government uh, healthcare system. More than 70% of the money spent in urban areas are in the private healthcare system. 63% of money spent in rural areas for healthcare is in the private healthcare system. So in some sense, I think there's a role to see if we can improve that system, especially given the new technologies that are available. Right? So that would be an interesting problem. Okay, uh, I'm sort of broad landscape is what I'm trying to paint. Um, it could be in education, right? There are amazing things going on today with content being available, being you know being flooded with uh, content. 
but can we deliver that in Indian languages? Can it be, uh, you know, uh, help, uh, especially in the rural setting, and so on and so forth. So there, there is a whole area uh, around education that it could help. Um, again, closer to Aadhaar, for instance, there's this whole financial backbone. You know, uh, more than 60% of Indians don't have bank accounts. Right? They're not plugged into the financial system. They can't save their money in banks. Right? Uh, so, can we, you know, help bring access to uh, banking? Uh, financial inclusion is the sort of term that's used uh, commonly for this. Uh, so that's another area uh, uh, I think where um, we can play a part. Uh, you know, it could be retail. I'm getting a sense. Yeah. It could be retail. You know, uh, there. You know, there was this big debate about uh, during that FDI time frame about how the WalMarts and IKEAs are going to take over and so on. Uh, but I think there's a really good system in place already with these little shops which have a trust network built around their clientele in the villages, can we empower them? Can we maybe using technology of the cloud and the devices and so on, make their uh, supply chains more efficient? Make them uh, better players in that and market. And also make them hubs for various other uh, exactly. uh, products and services exactly. that need to be um, uh, delivered to the well, base of the pyramid, bottom of the pyramid. You know, here at Sankarp 2013, yeah. The focus is on whether or not transformational change is being affected. You're, you're a man who knows about transformational change as head of technology at Aadhaar. Uh, you know, what, how do you rate uh, the chances of success when it comes to transformational change in each of the areas that you talked about and tie it into some of the technology changes that have taken place here in India, which perhaps have become even greater enablers. Right, no, absolutely. See, in the last, you know, five years, last 10 years, certain major changes have occurred, you know. To the uninitiated, what are they? Well, the, the devices that we're all carrying around, right, these mobile phones, uh, they're amazing, amazingly powerful platforms, okay. That, that price point for something as powerful as that was not possible 10 years ago. Today, because of the numbers, we are able to buy these phones for, I mean, even like 5,000, 10,000 rupees, which are smartphones with a huge uh, capability. What do they do? Apart from the compute power, and apart from the fact that they're connected and so on and so forth, firstly, they are moving away from keyboard and mouse, okay? And the mouse might be something that we're all used to. You know, we but might feel like it's, it's an extension of our hand. Today. But it's a pretty intimidating device for the uninitiated, right? So these devices, whether it's tablets, smartphones, and so on, they can bridge the literacy divide that we have. Okay. People in the village need not know English, or maybe they can't even read, but they are able to say, hey, okay, I can, I can press things around, and you know, I can uh, punch numbers and do a lot of useful things. There are lots of very smart people, excepting they have not been educated or they're, they're not literate, right? So in that sense, the device has gotten very powerful and its user interface is voice, Siri-like technology, is gestures. It's uh, now, you know, you can, you can uh, touch, you can do a bunch of things that can bridge the technology, uh, that can build, uh, bridge the literacy divide that we have. The second is, thanks to the 800, whatever, 900 million phones, uh, mobile phones out there, the telecom operators have pretty much blanketed the country with base stations. Mm. Now, the connectivity here is much better than in the Bay Area that I keep visiting, right? So what does that do? We were earlier not able to penetrate and reach the villages. Now, with this mobile coverage, you're, you can do that. Several services can ride on the mobile networks, which were not possible earlier. The third large change, which I'll refer to as Aadhaar, is the processing power of the cloud. Suddenly, you can pack a whole lot of compute power in one place. You can get a lot of storage. The cost of storage in 1980 for one gigabyte of storage was about a million dollars, right? Today, the cost of one gigabyte of storage is 10 cents, right? And we're talking about in our lifetimes, we've yes. seen this happen. You know, 10, one is to 10 million is the ratio we're talking about, right? Yes. So we can buy a lot of storage. We can put the data of the entire country in a, uh, in a place if you want to deliver services for various sectors. Right. Compute power, Aadhaar today, to issue one million Aadhaars a day, 
does a whopping 350 trillion biometric matches every day, right? It is the, the largest system of its kind in the world. And also, by the way, the most accurate, it's, uh, right? So now, that kind of compute power, you would think we are using you know, football fields of data servers, I mean, of compute servers and so but on. But the cloud has taken over on No, that. but we're, we're using less than 5,000 square feet of data center space. That's because we're able to pack so much compute power in small areas, you know, whatever, 10 cores, 12 cores, uh, and so on, where the, the CPUs are getting more and more powerful. They're about 10 times as uh, power efficient as they were 10 years ago, right? So all of these changes have enabled us to firstly standardize and put our data in one place. The entire country is data, uh, data if uh, you require it. Sure. The network allows you the reach, thanks to the mobile uh, revolution, we have a reach to the villages. And here you have devices that people can actually use. Right? So, if so you, it's just about implementing or inserting the solutions into what you've exactly. just described and ensuring that they fit in seamlessly. Exactly. exactly. So now it's up to us to say, okay, is it education? Is it healthcare? Is it retail? Is it financial inclusion? Uh, and start building these pieces because I think the infrastructure is there. It's, an, it's not a matter of, you know, is it there or can we do it? It it's, is there, now it, do it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. Shrikant Nadamani, you always sound fired up and that's very <laughs> infectious. Thanks very much for your time today. Thank you, thanks for having me.